what is up guys welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video thank you all so very much for tuning in uh today i've just got a super quick one for you uh it's just a real nice lazy sunday over here uh so i figured i'd mosey on out here and uh mess with a little bit of stuff i got going on on the white truck here and uh i figured it'd be a good video for y'all to watch uh have a little helpful tips and tricks here but more or less just watching me do some cool stuff on some wiring but uh like i said we're gonna start with a wiring harness build uh i already have the actual engine harness built for it but uh we are going to uh do the alternator harness today uh gonna be a lot of stuff that i take out of it uh so more or less this is going to kind of focus on more if you're like building a race truck or something like that because we're going to be gutting a lot of stuff out of the harness uh, you could definitely, if you chose, you could just cut the wires that you don't want anymore, but I'm a little OCD. I like to, uh, drop a little bit of weight, even if it's, a not even enough to make a difference, but uh, I like to get rid of anything that I don't want in the harness anymore. And I will strip the entire, uh, section of that harness out, depin it and everything. So I figured it'd be a good video, uh, show y'all how to depin a harness and stuff like that and how I loom it and stuff. But, uh, that's what we got going on today, so let's jump on it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and let's do it. All right, so real quick, I just wanna go over uh, my tool layout here. Uh, don't have to have snap-on stuff. You can definitely do this without it. Uh, this is just my tool preference. Uh, I like stuff to be easy for me. But uh, these right here are definitely the most awesome wire strippers and crimpers you can buy. Uh, I absolutely love these things. Definitely one of my favorite purchases I've made from the Snap-on truck. Uh, part number, Paul, Wisconsin, Ch Charlie, Sam, Seven, Apple, Charlie, Frank. Uh, these things are the bee's knees because uh, you got your nice crimpers up top. Uh, I really do not like it when you, they're down here. In this section, you got to feed it over the wire and crimp it like that. I really don't like it. I love where they've got this placed. But got that, uh, definitely should go get you a pair of flush cuts. Uh, this is uh, really just if you use any zip ties when we're doing this because uh, I really, really hate it when people uh, leave uh, sharp edges on these and they cut me. Uh, we've actually gotten trouble at a different job that we I used to work at where somebody actually got hurt uh, because uh, nobody had flush cuts. So uh, definitely should go grab you a pair of these. Uh, they work awesome even for just snipping wires and stuff like that. I uh, then have my small torch. Uh, this is for heat shrink. And then I have the most important part uh, of this job that you're gonna need is I have just right here, this is just a pair of tweezers. Uh, I'll show you what they're for. We're gonna use them for pulling out the lock on some of the actual terminals but uh this right here is what you're going to need uh, if you want to do this this exact way this is the blue you can get it off the snap-on truck but you don't have to they sell it at advanced or wherever it'll be in that little star shape uh bit this is just a little bit more handy because it's all in just one place so uh here's your terminal kit tool you're only going to use uh depending on what you're messing with uh i'm messing with power strokes so you'll probably only use like one or two of these things so uh, definitely, definitely need to go get you one of these, even if it's from the park store or whatever it may be. But this is a Blue Point part number, Tango, Tango, one, two, Kentucky, Tango. So uh, definitely gonna need that. I'll show you how that works and everything. But uh, there's my tool layout, and then I've got my heat shrink. Here is my loom I'm gonna be using. Uh, I really, really like this stuff, uh, you know, for building race harnesses and stuff like that, because it, uh, expands and it looks really really nice with the heat shrink uh i just prefer the look of it um but you can buy this stuff just on e i think it's ebay or amazon uh alex tech uh that he's got a bunch of different sizes for the loom i've got three or four of them uh sizes laying over there on the shelf uh i love them i use them for everything the half inch hose i like to uh like on your air dogs and stuff like that uh if you don't want to run a in lines and uh your OCD like I am and you want it to look better than what it does just with the rubber hose uh the half inch stuff uh looks really really good uh actually show you real quick on my air dog harness under the black truck here so if you look right here I used it to just wrap my all my heater hoses and everything for my air dog uh and then I heat shrunk it 
down there at the bottom. And I just, I really, I really like the quick disconnect hoses on this thing. Uh, so I didn't want to run a in on it because of the ease of just being able to pop it off and everything. So I just wanted to make it look a little bit better, but that stuff is just hands down. Awesome. I love this stuff, but, uh, here is our harness. Uh, I'm going, I've already got mine, uh, stripped of all the insulation and everything, all the old wrap. Uh, and I've got it tied up how I want it routed and everything. And then I'm going to show you how to deep in what I don't want out of it. So. All right, guys, so I've got, I already got it deep end here, but this is uh, the entire section that I do not want in the harness anymore. So this would run all the way along. And uh, this is for the AC stuff on my white truck. We don't have AC anymore, so we're getting rid of everything. But uh, this would all run to this connector right here. And the way that this works is if you look down in here, sorry about the strobing. Uh, the little red line that runs across there is your lock. So this part right here, right down in the middle of the connector, uh, you're going to pull that out. Uh, it's going to be a pain in the butt. Uh, that's why the tweez we got the tweezers. Um, you're just going to have to get a good grip on it, and it will be tight, and just pull out. And then what we're going to do is your pins would be running into this back of this connector here. Uh, like so and what we would do is we would go in here to our toolkit and grab this and down there on the little prongs on the inside uh, you would press those out and then how that would work is you'd reach in here press that out keep it held and then Pull your connector right out the back. Uh, you just got to get that lock out there. Uh, no, I'm sorry. This is kind of hard to show you uh, uh, with no light in such a small area. But uh, just what I like to do on this is um, if I've got a big, big bulkhead connector with a bunch of pins in it, uh, I like to go back and usually on the back here in this area, uh, this rubber grommet will be numbered and I will get a piece of paper and write down every single color wire and everything uh, just so I uh, remember and don't have to worry about it because uh, if you go and decide you want to loom this, uh, what will happen is um, when you take these connectors off because you can't get the actual loom over it and the heat shrink and you deep in this whole thing, uh, you want to remember where everything goes uh, if you're not removing anything. So also while I'm here, I'm going to be converting this over to uh, Super Duty style uh, pigtail. So uh, this is just so uh, I can run the alternator off my black truck on it uh, for the time being. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this. And another good thing is I really, really dislike these uh, push connector style Majiggers. I really don't like these things. So uh, we're going to get rid of that and uh, run us a Super Duty alternator on it. So uh, that's the biggest reason we're missing with this really is to get rid of that and then convert this on over. So I've got my new pigtail here. Uh, so I'm going to do that and now I'm going to go ahead and start looming. Since I didn't get a uh, good um, uh, shot to show you on how I did this, I'm going to show you now. So uh, this is just a different style connector here. And uh, this is our new alternator pigtail. I need to remove uh, one of these wires. So what we're gonna do is I've just got, you can use the tweezers, some of these connectors, the tweezers are not gonna work uh, very good on it. Um, so what we do is we'll reach in here just on the side and I just wanna get up underneath it and pry up. And then I'll do the same on the other side, so make sure it's coming out nice and even. And then we can just pull our lock up out of there, just like so. And now, if you look in here, we now have uh, access to pull our pins out on whichever one we want. So I'll uh, figure out what wire I need gone, and then I will show you how to pull that pin out. All right, so if we're looking at our inside of our harness here, uh, the orientation, like some of these aren't gonna matter, but this one it does. So I want to pay attention to, uh, 
I'm sorry. This is stuff is really hard to show you guys. Uh, I want to pay attention to how this is actually oriented. So if you look at how the square is, uh, there is a different way of the connector to go in. So uh, same exact deal. I've got my long uh, terminal pick here. And what we do is we just basically go down in here up over top and there's a lock in the very back. This is hard to show you without a light. Uh, you'll pull this up. So I like to put it in there, press it up as hard as I can, keep it held like so. And then you can just grab this wire and give it a good tug and it'll pop out. So now I have uh, the two wires that I need for my Super Duty alternator and we can go ahead and get it put on our harness. But uh, like I said, uh, some of these, like if you're going to loom it and then put the harness back together, uh, you do need to pay attention to the way that some of these actual pins uh, are oriented. This doesn't matter. And then now that we've got that gone, we can just go ahead and take our lock here, like so, and get it right back where it was, and press it in, make sure it snaps, and we are done. And now we can go ahead and splice it into our harness and loom it.
right guys, so I've got my harness all finished up here. Um, probably should have gone up a size in uh, the actual loom here, but that's all right, this is what we had, so that's what we're using. Uh, I've got all my uh, AC stuff stripped out of it, so this is strictly just, uh, basically just the alternator harness now. And uh, I like to uh, heat shrink all my ends up, make them look real nice. Uh, this is a little tight, but that's okay because our alternator has an adapter pigtail. So I wanted that nice and short uh, so it wasn't hanging out. Just uh, real sloppy looking. But uh, I don't know that I would really recommend doing it like this on a truck that actually um, gets like daily driven or anything like that. that you drive a lot. Uh, this loom isn't like really meant for a whole lot of road use. My white truck uh, really is not going to see a whole lot of road time. Uh, so, you know, if you're building like a race harness or something like that, this is the way that I like to do it. Uh, sorry that the video footage wasn't super great. It's kind of hard to uh, show down in these small holes and stuff like that on how to actually pull pins and stuff. But uh, you just got to take your time with it. Uh, don't get super frustrated. Um the locks and figuring out how to use the get the pins out and stuff when you first do it can be frustrating and scary uh i know this used to be like the number one thing that i hated doing i could not stand wiring or anything to do with wiring period uh just because i wasn't good at it but uh if you're gonna do something like this i suggest that like um i'm actually i think i'm gonna pull my engine harness out and show you guys that so here is my actual engine harness for the white truck uh, you can see that I've already redone this and everything uh, the way that I like to do it. Uh, this is what I really was trying to show you. But uh, right here, uh, this is probably one of the scariest things I've done as far as wiring goes. Um, if you look on the back here, every single one of these is numbered. Uh, like I said, go get you a uh, sheet of paper, write down your, num your wire colors, all that good stuff. Uh, just be smart about it. Uh, don't rush it or anything like that because you will uh, get confused and you don't want to put pins back in the wrong spot. Uh, either that or find you a pin out for whatever you're working on, uh, the harness. And uh, the reason I did this was I pulled uh, every single thing that we no longer need it out of this harness as well. So it is completely stripped also, so no glow plugs or anything like that. Uh, one good thing to note is some of these connectors you cannot... Um, uh, deep in like this one right here. Uh, you cannot deep in these. They're a different style of connector. Um, so what I do is I just, I get the loom, whatever loom will go over it. And then I taped it up and just, just wear it however I can make it look pretty and nice uh, without using heat shrink, which sucks, but you know, hey, it's better than uh, nothing. But anywhere that I can get heat shrink, I make sure to put heat shrink because it looks better. So like at my split here, I've got heat shrink and this is for each bank of our injectors here. Um, but yeah, so just take your time with it. Find you a pin out and everything like that. Uh, if you want to tackle something like that, um, and you'll be good to go. So, uh, get you some of these here tools, make your life a whole lot easier. If you want to tackle something like this, um, like I said, I know it's scary when you first jump on it, but, uh, y'all can do it. All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much all I've got for you on this fine Sunday. Uh, Nothing super special or really important. I just wanted to give y'all something to watch uh, tonight or something whenever you get time. But, uh, yeah, just uh, on your wiring stuff like that, uh, very important that you just uh, find you a day that you're not uh, occupied with anything else. Uh, you definitely want to spend a lot of time focusing, paying attention, reading on whatever you're working on and uh just make sure you have a pin out and stuff like that the biggest part of this job or doing anything like that is just really uh paying attention and taking your time uh so i usually usually i'll do this over at the house uh we've got a nice uh uh dining room table that i like to lay everything out on and i'll usually do it over there uh where i can just kind of chill out take my time uh i used to hate this stuff really really bad but now i, I find myself really really enjoying it uh so just a little tidbit there of information. Um, you know, I know that usually if you're like me, whenever you used to look at wiring or anything like that, you'd definitely just be like, no, I ain't messing with that stuff. 
Uh, but, you know, it really only takes you one time to really tackle something like this, and then you know that you can do it. Uh, so don't be scared of it. Just go for it. Um, that's really what I did. Uh, I bought a brand new engine harness here, and uh, that's the way that I tackled it. Um, old stuff like that, like uh, an old engine harness or anything like that, it's usually really, really hard to work with because it's usually really old and brittle. Uh, so I usually do like to start with a new harness on if I, you know, do something like this, uh, except for like what we loomed today, like our battery harness, you know, that's not really that big a deal. Uh, but make sure that when you're tearing it apart and stuff, make sure you're paying attention, make sure there's no busted wires or anything like that. You want to repair that while you're in there. And, uh, like I said, this loom probably is not the best for somebody that's going to daily drive their truck or whatever it may be. Uh, it's not really meant to, uh, take a lot of heat and abuse. Um, more or less just to look good. Uh, like I said, you know, this is for a truck that's not going to see very much road time at all. So, you know, if you want to make it look good, your truck stays in the garage most of the time, like mine does, you know, this is the loom that I like to use, but you can definitely do the exact same thing, uh, with like your normal, uh, plastic loom. Uh, this just looks better in my opinion, but, uh, I think that's where I'm really going to close it out. Uh, on your older stuff like this, like the stuff, whatever you pulled out of the harness, I like to just save it. You can't get some of this stuff anymore, especially on these old school trucks. So I'll save it, keep it off to the side because you never know when you might need it. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it'll look really good up under our hood here. Uh, it'll go over to our new solenoid there. And then I like to, uh, the biggest reason I do that is I like it really, really tight so that, uh, any way that I can hide wires, I like to do that. I really, really, really like not seeing any wires in the engine bay. Um, so anything like that, like on some of your connectors, what I'll usually do is I'll loom it out on the engine. And if I want to hide anything, I'll extend what pigtails I need to extend to tuck it and hide as much of it as I can. Uh, kind of like on my black truck over there. Uh, the You could almost see no uh, wiring on it whatsoever when it's put together. But uh, a little harder on this one because it's very, very open. Um, so we'll see what we can do on that. Uh, that's another thing, like right here. This thing's super, super ugly. Uh, your wiper motor wire. And so I did the exact same thing on that. Uh, just uh, deep pin it up there. And then I, you know, just, just made it look pretty, you know. So stuff like that, you know, you can... I like to do it on everything. <laughs> just my OCD, I think it looks good. But... Yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up there, guys. Thank you so very much for watching, subscribing, commenting, the whole nine yards. You guys are awesome. I can't stress that enough. Each and every single one of you is awesome. Uh, I hope you guys uh, watch these videos and get motivated to work on your own stuff. But uh, that's where I'm going to close it up. Thank you, guys, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.